People across cultures and across millennia, they've always had the instinct to stay connected to the dead, and they have pulled the available technologies of the day into service to try to get hold of the dead. But now we're at a point where the dead live in the tech already. It's easy to connect to the dead because they're everywhere in the online environment. Nearly everyone knows someone who had a Facebook account who passed away. There was a friend of mine who recently took their own life and I found out purely by reading statuses and comments on images from several uh, accounts on social media. We can all identify with the experience and it's, and it's kind of an, a new experience that we haven't had before in the pre-digital era. I got a, a direct message from someone saying, hey, are you, are you gonna come to the service tonight? Uh, and that was really strange because again, like I say, all, all of the interaction around the very real passing happened purely in, in the digital realm. If the dead person's leaving behind this hugely multifaceted online footprint, it gets in the way of people doing that process. It's like, okay, here's the durable biography. It's 2,000 pages and it's really complicated. You know? And here's the image the person presented to the world and here's their search history. Somebody can go off on a detective trail trying to kind of work out who was this person. And so you can open a door and you can go down and you keep on finding stuff and finding stuff and finding stuff. That's the kind of not letting go that can then maybe be deleterious and not allow people to rest in their grief for someone. Servers are filling up with data about dead people. And if you keep archiving data, sooner or later, you will have to ask yourself the question, what data should we save and what should be deleted? When everything is, is online, when the majority of what we do becomes virtual, it will be maybe one of the most important questions that people can, can deal with. We should think about what we leave behind on the web as parts of who we are. I think that because I'm, I'm working as a writer and a poet, uh, a lot of the performances that I do, what, I'm aware that they're going to exist online afterwards. And so I suppose there is this sort of like, you know, added pressure when you're creating the work to like create an, a, a monument to, to your, own, your own self or to your own kind of creative idea. I opted for deletion of my Google data through Inactive Account Manager. So if I'm inactive for 18 months on any Google service, including search engine, um, all of my data on Google will be deleted. People maybe need to be saving in order so that other people can you know, digitally curate their memories, their, their digital selves after they die. And maybe that's a, a, a future job that people could do, almost to be curating the digital afterlife of people, to, to making sure not just that they get uh, uh, the due respect, but that but that whatever it was that they were trying to do through their social media um, continues in a certain way. I'm going to be managing what I put online with what I feel is most important and most valuable and, and keeping it that reduced, keeping it that curated, keeping it that edited so that for one, it's not going to be that avalanche of things that my descendants inherit. Separate from any kind of thought about my own death, I'm just always aware when I'm like sharing poetry or just kind of like pithy thoughts that it's going to live on.